my sweet friends. Today I'm sharing how to create a raised stencil on your furniture makeovers. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. So if you're following me on my Instagram or Facebook stories, you may have already seen this steal of a deal I'm sharing today. Last week, I picked up this gorgeous vintage desk at my local thrift store selling for $14.99. I had to take a double take because I thought, this couldn't be right. <laughs> Maybe it was a new person pricing that day, but I have to say I am always thrilled when I find pieces like this. I don't find them often and it's always such an honor to work on them. So I brought it home and put it in my paint studio and the very first thing I did was assess any damage or any repairs that it needed. And this piece is solid. Isn't that fabulous? These old pieces often just last for years and years. However, the finish needed some TLC and that's just fine. You can tell that it was well loved. So I started by cleaning it with white lightning, which is a TSP substitute. I made sure to clean the inside of the drawers, the bottom of the drawers, the inside of this desk, and of course, give the entire piece a good once over and then a good rinsing. I like doing this with my spray bottles and a large sponge and to give it a rinse I have uh, clear water in a spray bottle and I just rinse and repeat. Once the piece was totally clean and 100% dry I went ahead and removed the original hardware and then I gave it a really good scuff sanding with my orbital sander and a 120 grit sandpaper. Here's what it looked like when it was all sanded down. Not too pretty, but don't worry, it gets better after it's primed and painted. To get the sanding dust off after I've sanded, I like using these tack cloths. I buy them in bulk, uh, but they're super inexpensive. You can pick them up off Amazon for under $2 a piece and they work fabulous and you get numerous uses out of them. And what this does is it just picks up every little speck of sanding dust. So when you're priming or painting, you get a perfectly clean finish. I find these tack cloths work much better than a damp cloth, which I see a lot of people using after they've sanded. Uh, because if you're using water on top of a sanded piece, it can raise the grain again, uh, which you do not want before you paint or prime. And I just find that these remove everything because they're very tacky. In fact, I don't like feeling them. I That's why I keep the plastic on them or wear gloves when I use them because they're extremely tacky. They pick up all the dust. So after they were all scuff sanded and they had all the dust removed, now it was on to priming. And I used my favorite BIN shellac based primer to cut through and stop the stains and the bleed through. And these older vintage pieces are notorious for bleed through. In fact, it was bleeding through like crazy after my first coat of, of primer. And again, one of the things I love about this primer is if you see it bleeding through the primer, you know it's gonna bleed through the paint. Once you repeat the process and do a second coat and do not see bleed through coming through anymore, you know you are 100% safe to paint and to top coat and nothing's going to peek through and rear its ugly head. And here's a little quick tip for you. When I'm applying my bin shellac base primer using this roller. I use the roller to get into all the crevices. Um, you wouldn't think that it actually does any detail work like this, but these rollers are very flexible. They're high density foam rollers and they can definitely get into tight little spots. You can use the tip as you would a brush. Okay, that sounds weird. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is use the roller as you would roll on the flat surfaces. And when you come to the detail parts, try using the tip to get the paint in there because I find it works really, really well. In fact, I rarely need to take out a paintbrush to get into any of the crevices because I just use the foam tip of these rollers and it works beautifully. 
The only thing that I would add to that is when you're using the tip of the roller to get into smaller spaces or crevices, etc., just always kind of backtrack to make sure there are no drips. This way you'll end up with a smooth finish every time. So here's what the desk looked like after two coats of primer and a light sanding. When I posted this desk on stories, I actually added a poll. Should I paint it light or should I paint it dark? And light went out by, oh, I think it was 75%. So I had this leftover paint and Floetrol mixture from my faux linen dresser that I did a couple of weeks back. And I had mixed up way too much for that project and I hate wasting paint. Uh, so what I did was I thought, you know what? French linen is a gorgeous, gorgeous, neutral why not use it for this vintage desk there was at least a cup or maybe even a cup and a half left of this paint and Floetrol mixture and it mixed up beautifully so away I went I painted two coats of this French linen onto the desk here's another little tip if you're worried about brush marks Adding Floetrol to your paint, it opens the dry time and it allows the paint to lay flat. It gives the paint a longer time to settle, which decreases brush strokes. So adding a little Floetrol to your paint mixture, you can never go wrong. The Floetrol can also be used for faux paint techniques as I did a few weeks back with this faux linen dresser I created. I'll add the card up above if you wanna go take a peek, but it's really great to have on hand if you do any sort of furniture painting. I have to say, it's been a while since I've painted such a beautiful, curvy, detailed piece, and I had such a lovely time doing it. Like I mentioned, I don't come across pieces like this too often, and it's such a pleasure to work on them. Once my two coats of French linen were totally dry, now the design part kicks in, and I was thinking to myself, what can I do to do this beautiful de desk justice. <laughs> you know what? It, it was just so lovely. It had such a beautiful shape. All the details were so gorgeous. And I thought I wanted something classic, vintage. So I pulled out this Royal Damask stencil. It was brand new, still in the package. I've never used this particular stencil or design before. So I was excited to give it a try. To create the raised design, I used Dixie Belle's white mud. The reason why I chose this white mud was because when I sand back, I wanted the white to show through. Uh, so this worked very, very well for it. And of course, if you want brown to show through, you could use a brown uh, mud of some sort. They, uh, you could also use a variety of things to create the texture. I mean, I've used joint compound, I've used DAP spackling, Redesign with Prima and other companies also sell textured paste that you can use to apply to create a raised stencil. So there's a variety of things you can use. But again, in this case, I didn't want to have to paint the raised design and I knew I wanted the white to show through. So this white mud worked perfectly. Now to create a raised stencil is not difficult at all. I mean, the basics are is you lay the stencil design in the area you want it, so you place it. Then you can adhere it with a temporary spray adhesive or some painter's tape so it doesn't move on you. Then you apply or skim your textured paste. You lift the stencil while it's still wet. You wait for it to dry and then you paint it. You can paint it over, give it a sanding. You can decide what color you want it. Uh, you could dry brush it. You could add uh, gilding wax onto it. There's so many directions you can take after you've applied your raised stencil. But having said that, even though the basics are simple, there are some tips and tricks that make things run, they make things go a little bit smoother. For instance, the first jar of this Dixie, white Dixie mud uh, that I was using <clears throat> was very dry and it did not make it easy for me to skim it over my stencil. 
My drawer also had molding all around it, like a tiny little lip. So ideally, you'd want to cut the stencil to size because it doesn't lay flat 100%. Uh, but this, along with uh, my kind of dry Dixie mud, my white mud there, it, it kind of made a mess. So here you can see that the drawer did not come out perfect. Uh, I, I don't look to make it perfect because once it's sanded back, painted and sanded back, I want a distressed sort of vintage look anyway. So I don't need the raised stencil to be absolutely perfect, but I don't want big globs hanging off it either. <laughs> So what I did was I took a toothpick and it's easy enough to fix up with a toothpick or any sort of sharp object. I just kind of scooped off the excess mud that wasn't supposed to be there and reshaped some of the scrollies uh, along with the toothpick, which was quite easy to do. Now, when I opened up a new jar of the Dixie Mud and I used it on my other drawer, I was so used to the harder texture of the other one, the old jar, that, oh, this just turned out to be a mess, a total mess. Now, no toothpick is going to fix this. But no worries, to start all over again, all I did was I took my putty knife and I scraped off the raised stencil that did not turn out well. And so long as your, ra your um, mud or whatever texture compound you're using is still wet, you should have no problem scraping it off with a putty knife. Then I dampened a shop towel and I just wiped the excess right off. Um, it just works fine and then you can start all over again. So try not to stress if your first try doesn't turn out, just remove it and start all over again. To do a raised stencil on the sides of this desk was much, much easier because I'm working with a flat surface, a larger surface, so the stencil fit in perfectly. Uh, so this was easy peasy. I just used some green painter's tape to hold the stencil in place, and then I skimmed the whole design with the mud. You'll also find that once you start skimming with whatever texture you're using, it actually helps keep the stencil on. So it's a bit of a, once that texture goes on there, the stencil doesn't even want to pull away. And this part is so satisfying. As soon as you finish skimming your texture on, you remove the stencil right away while the texture is still wet. And it is so satisfying pulling it away and seeing this gorgeous design. This raised stencil would have taken a good few hours to dry if left on its own. So I busted out my heat gun and made the drying process a lot quicker. You, if you don't have a heat gun, you could also use a hair dryer. Once the raised stencil was 100% dry, I painted another coat of the French linen over top everything. Here I am painting a coat of French linen over the raised stencil and doesn't it look beautiful even as is? You know what? I didn't even need to sand it back to show the white. Just having that raised texture tone on tone looks absolutely gorgeous. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, there's so many directions you can take these raised stencil designs and each look is different but yet beautiful. So I decided I wanted the white to still peek through even though the tone on tone looked lovely. So I took a sanding sponge with 220 grit sandpaper and started sanding the raised stencil. Uh, this takes off the French linen and it allows the white mud to peek through. Now I didn't sand it totally even all over because again, I wanted a vintage look. I wanted it to look worn and as if it has been used over many years, so I did not want my raised stencil to look perfect. After I sanded back the two sides, I continued on to the drawers. And once everything was sanded, I used my shop vac to vacuum up all the dust. To highlight all the beautiful details on this desk, I used buttercream and I did dry brushing on all the details and that's including the molding around the desk drawers. Dry brushing is just that. You take a tiny little bit of paint on the tips of your brush. I remove the excess on a shop towel and then I lightly kiss 
the uh, moldings that I'm trying to bring out. And it's just a, a little touch of paint gets on the tips of those moldings and it creates a really, really beautiful highlight. To finish it off, I found these gorgeous pulls, <clears throat> excuse me, I had in my inventory from Hobby Lobby, and they just reminded me of Damask. Uh, they remind me of big jewels on this piece. Um, now, the color was a little off. They were a little too yellow in tone, so I dry brushed them in buttercream and then did a light dry wash in the French linen, and they match really well. I have to say I'm in love with how this piece all came together and I know I've repeated myself but it was such a pleasure to work on and I cannot wait to hear what you think. So let's take another look. Here's the before and here's the after. I hope this piece has inspired you to try a raised stencil on your furniture. If you found any value in this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting that bell so you get all the notifications when I upload a new video. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. I'm also on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. So I hope you have a fabulous day. I look forward to seeing you again and happy painting everyone.